Hello folks, Phil Gallagher here for another Legacy video. Today we're going to be playing with Paul R's Bug Loam Raven's Crime deck list. Um, whatever you want to call this, it's kind of neat. So um, when I say loam here, I, I really am not referring to like traditional four color loam, like the Chalice of the Void Knight of the Reliquary deck. This is, this is a deck that has life from the loam and is using it as a value card. So we really want to just return three lands to our hands here, either because we can shuffle them back via Brainstorm, or we can retrace Raven's Crime. Now, retrace is not a common mechanic. So uh, for one black, target player discards a card. But you can cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a land card in addition to paying its other costs. So you cast Life from the Loam, you return a bunch of lands back to your hand. You can only make one land drop a turn, but you can obliterate your opponent's hand via Raven's Crime. And that's kind of cool. So that's kind of the the cuteness of the deck. That's the spice of the deck. And the rest of the shell is a powerful bug control shell. Um, we are kind of playing a cute one of uh, Cephalid Coliseum, uh, which can be some card selection and also gets kind of spicy when uh, Life from the Loam is resolved or uh, is involved. Sorry. And we have a few powerful standalone threats like Merktide Regent and Uro. The sideboard is a pile of relatively good cards as well. Some of these cards are a little bit less good than they used to be. Carpet of Flowers, for example, has gotten a lot worse since Prismatic Ending became very, very popular in the format, but I like a lot of the rest of what's going on here. I am not sure if this is supposed to be a Leyline of the Void deck versus some other piece of Graveyard Hate, but most of the stuff that's here is pretty reasonable. And of course, we have two copies of Null Rod because, well, fuck Bryant Cook in particular. Hashtag sorry not sorry. Um, I am pretty excited to try this one out, although I'm guessing this is going to be a slog of a league. Uh, most of the time when I play decks that, that look like this, the, the, the videos tend to be a little bit long, so uh, fair warning, you may want to settle in and get comfy. I mean, you can see what the video length is already, but for me, I'm, I'm guessing this one is probably going to take about three hours to play. Um, uh, of note, I do need to borrow the cards. I kind of forgot about that, but the cards will be here by the time round one starts, I promise. Um, anyway, if you're new here, please consider subscribing for Legacy Modern and Vintage content five days a week. If you're a regular, throw me a like before we get started. It's one of the easiest ways to support me. If you're watching from your couch and you can't hit the like button, no worries. I get it. I do that all the time, too. And if you want to get one of your own decks on stream or you want to try this out, the deck list is always available in the video description. Let's battle. I'm excited to play some Legacy. Okay, I am playing against a Yorian deck, which is most likely Death and Taxes, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, my opening hand doesn't really do anything. Like, I have a Raven's Crime. I don't have a Life from the Loam to support it. I have Merktide Regent that I can't play super quickly. I think I'm just going to mulligan this one. Uh, this hand is medium. I think I'm going to keep it and pitch this Force of Will, and then assume that I've got a decent set of tools at my disposal for the rest of the match. All right, it is indeed Death and Taxes. Okay, I have found another Force of Will. I think I'm just looking for lands here. I'm going to, I think, worry a little bit less about removing some of this stuff. These are okay cards, but it, it, if I keep this, it makes it hard to hit my next, my third land drop. Especially if I get Wastelanded. I think I'm going to shuffle. Okay, and there is a land. It's not a great one, but it is a land. Oh, this is going to be a slog of a match, though. Yep. Oogie dokie. Yep, and Giver of Runes is different from other than of Runes. Uh, like, Giver doesn't protect itself, so you just want to attack with it. Um, There's another Wasteland. I would like Cephalid Coliseum to get Wastelanded. But this might end up costing me a bunch of life if I play it now when I don't have to. So I'm going to go ahead and play Underground Sea and pass. Yeah. All right. I'll take another one from Giver here. This game is not starting out well. Something, something, something. Make, make your mana bases stable when you can. Uh, we'll just be passing the turn here. Now, at some point, I may just draw a life from the loam and just, like, completely blow my opponent the fuck out for wastelanding me twice. Uh, that's, I believe, good enough to get a force of will here. 
I can't really deal with a Cauldra right now. And I think I'm pitching... Uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on its name. I think I'm pitching my Merktide Regent over my Uro. I think the... Uh, I think the game is going to go long, so I don't think I just want to open myself up to just, like, losing to a Swords to Plowshares or Path. Okay, uh, now I have some real choices. Uh, apparently tr another Trop is not a choice, though. I guess I'll grab a Bayou then. Not perfect. Though, like, this doesn't activate the Cephala Coliseum, um, for example. Not that I would want to do that, but just, like, keeping it in mind. Yup! Really needed that library. I'm kind of sure that goes without saying, though. All right, now the the giver is no longer on attacking duty. The low cost of two life, I can I can cast my spells. I believe I'm just going to go for an endurance in combat. Go for a block, make giver tap, and then I can start looking at like assassin's trophy and row and whatnot a bit later. All right, here we go. Ow. I don't think I want to do this to you. I, I don't think I want to like nuke either player's graveyard here. I don't really want to put more stone forges or wastelands into my opponent's deck as of right now. Okay, cool. That's all fine with me. Field of Ruin, sure. Okay. That's just probably gonna get like a flicker wisp, uh, which is really annoying here. Yeah, these pain lands are going to cost me this game some portion of the time. I'm getting a Stoneforge Mystic. So I can Assassin's Trophy, a Giver of Runes, and Force of Will of Stoneforge, and that would kind of like leave me sitting there looking at my opponent, hoping they don't have anything else. Or I could play this Uro, hope to spike a blue card, and then counter the Stoneforge that way. I am really far behind. I've missed some land drops. Let's X that out. Roughly what percentage of my deck is actually blue here. So I have 4, 8, 9, and 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I have 18 hits out of 46. Not the best. I'm just worried that my opponent's top decks are too good and they have Yorian waiting in the wing and like Yorian blinking these is going to beat me. I think I'm going to greed here. And that is exactly what this is. This costs me two life because of like, these pain lands. Let's see if it's worth it. I have failed. Holding Endurance back probably saves me at least one point of life, if not more. Oh, another Skyclave. That's rough. Yep. I'm going to take three this turn. All right, as expected. I'll go to eight. And again, these pain lands are beyond scary here. All right. Green, green, blue. Blue, ow, one, two, three, four, five. Done. Grab an Uro. Make another land drop. I still don't have this Force of Will active for the Stoneforge Mystic, which is a problem. Assassin's Trophy is not going to deal with both Giver and Stoneforge simultaneously. Have another one? Okay. So, they have pitched Yorion to play Solitude. Uh, yeah, I did not hit a blue card here, unfortunately. I'm going to take five here, uh, which all in all is not good. All right, so this answers the Stoneforge Mystic. Pain lands, though. These pain lands, though. Like, the pain lands coupled with Force of Will is just going to kill me. I guess I answer Giver right now. Um, so let's go, like, green, black. Yeah, protect, protect away. Alright, so now we can try to Endurance, ambush some things in combat. We'll see if my opponent does attack in. I assume they're pretty much obligated to. But I'm going to take like three more damage to my own cards here. Ah, that's rough. I'm not happy about this. I'll we'll have to find another way to answer this Stoneforge Mystic. My, my Endurance just becomes so, so much worse. Nice. But ow. I'm not going to select anything here. So I'll block the one that has an endurance under it so I get a larger creature back. 
And now we'll try to find an answer to the Cauldra. I get, I get one draw. Uh, I get two draws. Uh, Wasteland does not do it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and concede to the Cauldra there. Uh, that just very, very easily beats me. Okay. Sudden Edict is fine. Toxic Deluge is actively good. Um, Null Rod is probably good enough. Uh, again, Cauldra, though, is slightly awkward. I'm not sure how exactly I want to board. These these cards are reasonable. Cauldra's terrifying. Like I can I can play a Jace to be able to bounce that germ token. But like I'm not I'm not very swift at closing the game. So it's very possible they will just be at seven mana and be able to re-equip it, at which point it's still a problem. Eh. I don't know. I feel like I'm probably going to trim a cantrip. I'm, I'm unsure what I'm supposed to be doing here in terms of sideboarding. Like, the whole Raven's Crime thing is kind of cute, and this card can be okay versus my opponent. It's a way I can strip equipment out of their hand. I don't know. Maybe maybe the discard needs to come out here, because it's not targeted discard that can take exactly the card that I need. I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I do this and don't board in the Null Rods? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I am, I am unsure. Um, but I want to be on the other side of the matchup in this matchup. Uh, this is not a capable hand. If I brainstorm lock myself, I die instantly. Fuck. Why are these pain lands in the deck? I am going to hurt myself so much if I keep this one land Cephalid Coliseum hand. Which I'm going to do, because this is a mold of six already. Here we go. Let's find some land drops. Those count. We're going to keep those. No shuffle. Uh, I don't have green mana yet, but like baby steps, one thing at a time here. Mom can get caught up in Toxic Deluge later. I am fine with that. The next card is a Wasteland, which I don't super want. I would like to find green mana. I would also like to fetch accordingly. Ow. Burrow. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and shuffle here. I have picked up a Fatal Push, which is a fine draw. If I get Wasteland and I can't cast this Toxic Deluge, I probably want to destroy this Mother of Runes. I am going to go ahead and Fatal Push that there, even though I have potential resources that might make it less good. All right, that one, that one can stay. Please don't get Brainstorm locked and die. Uh... Also, like, I have more Fatal Pushes in my deck, so I'm probably supposed to Brainstorm off my Cephalid Coliseum and take damage, uh, which is frustrating. Please don't get Brainstorm locked and die. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. That sure is bad. <laughs> Alright. Um, yep. Yep, yep, yep. I, I promise I am going to try to not harp on the mana base the entire league. That thing will hit me for so much damage if I let it resolve because I'm brainstorm locked. I don't want to be using my resources this way. I really, really, really and truly do not. Um, but it's it's where I'm at. So this I have no castable cards. Uh, distance is pain. Yeah. I'm gonna get like Rashad and Ported in addition to this. Yup. Yup. I can't really concede either, because all it takes for me to get out of this is two like ripped land, land drops in a row. My opponent has zero pressure currently. And the cards that I have in my hand are admittedly quite good. Alright, they're just gonna pass. Do your thing. Okay, there is land drop number one. I will, I will need one more in order to play the Life from the Loam. Um, I think I'm just going to let that get tapped. If my opponent had a little Wasteland, they already would have Wastelanded me. I need this to remain somewhat difficult to tap down on critical turns. Okay, yep. Um, there's 
I could Assassin's Trophy a port, but now that there's a third one, I don't know that that really makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and let that get tapped. Okay. Well, uh, got a whole bunch of nothing here. Whole bunch of nothing. And my opponent will port this down, which I accept. Oh, that's that's bad for me. I probably have to just uh, Assassin's Trophy that. Because otherwise my opponent just locks down my mana forever. I'm going to fetch. I might grab the basic, but it's so hard for me to get into my main phase with colored mana anyway. Accordingly, I think I'm going to grab a trop. And we'll nuke the vial. The thing about the current situation is that, like, one wasteland already puts me pretty darn far away um, from casting spells. So if I get one basic... Like, I will have basic forest, and I don't know. It would be a a slog trying to cast a bunch of my other spells. All right, you've got that. Um, yep, I'll let that stuff happen. Okay, more, more land is good. See if I ever make it to my main phase with green mana. My guess is no. A resounding no at that. All right, I'm down to 12. Okay, now my opponent... Oh, my opponent might not need to cast anything else. Ever. This is the point where I have to start Assassin's Trophying Rashadon ports. Now that my opponent has made that other land drop. It might be. Yeah. It might be. Okay, my opponent's going to let me go to my draw step. Uh, which is fine. I can still cast an Assassin's Trophy then. Oh no, they're uh they're not doing that. Alright, um blow up a port. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am aware. Second life from the loom. I'm pretty close to just being pseudo deterministically dead to the spirit of the labyrinth. Um, and by that I mean like the number of land drops I would need to hit to do my stuff. Alright. So now I can blink a planes and then still port me down twice. Yep. Uh, I am now on a two turn clock. I'm not sure that I'm on uh, realistic outs anymore. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, I was unable to cast my spells this game. I am dead. And my opponent has played well enough that uh, I'm not going to, you know, idiot check them and say, are they not going to port me next turn? No, they, they know what's up. GG's. Well played. Okay, uh, opening hand for round two looks pretty good minus not having access to green mana. Like, as long as either my draw steps or my brainstorm find me green mana, I will be able to do the things that I want my deck to be doing. Um, it does really suck that I don't have green because, like, naturally playing life from a loam on turn two would be exceptionally good here. My opponent just discarded a day's undoing. All right. What could possibly go wrong playing against this opponent? Uh, we're gonna have to watch out for whole breacher type effects. Natural Bayou? Wasteland, not quite what I'm looking for. Uh, I think I'm going to brainstorm and try to hit a fetch land here. Um, again though, I might just brainstorm lock myself and it's disastrous. Ah, oh, damn it. So we've drawn four lands and I don't have the ability to cast, uh, Four different spells that I have access to right now. Wow. Um, okay. 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 All right. I'm not. I'm not going to Raven's Crime again. I, I don't think having my opponent just randomly discard a card is all that great. Or sorry, not even randomly. I don't think having my opponent discard one card is particularly strong right now. When. I don't know exactly what they're doing yet. I hope I put Wasteland on top. I don't remember what order I ordered things in. Nope. Um, so accordingly, I think I'm just going to make my land drop and pass. All right. So we might be playing against a Bant control deck that just has Days Undoing in a random flux slot. Okay. Um, that's pretty disastrous. So now I can't draw additional cards. Do my phone just miss on that Narset? Yeah, this is the revealed zone, right? Yeah, they just missed on that Narset. Huh. So I guess I'll wasteland that Tundra. I don't, uh, 
I don't feel good about my position. I'm just like a day's undoing away from conceding. That's a spell pierce. That's okay. It's good. But spell pierce doesn't get me dead. Face the mind sculptor sure does. Mm okay. Alright, good. I can uh I can cast that spell. <laughs> All right, so if my opponent has a backup for the Jace here, I think I am probably just going to concede. Here's to hoping. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in the towel here. I have uh, I've tripped over my own mana base and died. All right, um, Herbal Flowers seems fine. Jace seems fine. A bunch of the rest of my cards are okay. I'm not sure how I feel about Force of Will. Answering my opponent's Planeswalkers is nice. Um, but I might end up... I might end up walking my own counter spells or thought seizes into Veil of Summers, uh, which isn't the best. Plague Engineer might be medium here, depending on whether or not my opponent has Ice Fang Glottals. Is one of these good art and one of these is not good art? Well, good frame. The same art. I like this one. We'll maybe keep one. Have access to the effect. And I don't know. Maybe I can go down on Raven's Crime. Down on Fatal Push. Probably have okay tools as a whole. Maybe something like this. I would like to play first. Okay. Um, this is probably a keep. I have three lands. I will theoretically have access to all my colors. I will have a counter spell to stop something that my opponent does, and I will also have the ability to Maybe brainstorm and shuffle. I say maybe because, like, I don't want to play this Cephalid Coliseum in a control mirror. It will deal me so much damage. I don't want to play that on, like, turn two. I, I would, in fact, like to shuffle that back into my deck, but Bayou won't allow me to shuffle that back into my deck. Bayou does not cast brainstorm. Okay, Life from the Loam is an absolutely fantastic pickup. I am. Very, very, very happy with that. Um, so let's fetch a trop and return that land. I will fight over a force of negation. The life from the loam, in addition to like helping me hit land drops, is going to help to fuel Uro and just like dump a bunch of cards in there so I can do Uro stuff. All right, I am plenty happy to see land pass. I think I will just dredge life from the loam for my turn. Yeah, some bonus fetch lands. All right, so let's fetch. Um, I'm probably going to be good no matter what I take. I already have green, green, and blue, blue. Let's grab an underground sea for variety. Go ahead and just play the Uro this turn. Yeah, brainstorm away. All right, Uro has resolved. I'll get some life. Ooh, nice. I'll put a forest into play. Sacrifice that stuff. I now have four cards in graveyard for bringing back Uro. I could have played Cephalid Coliseum and just like randomly brainstormed. Um, I do not want my opponent to have this, although it's super cute if I find a Leovold. I think this is Force of Will worthy. I think Jace is worth more than Brainstorm. All right. Now Carpet adds two mana to my opponent's mana pool. Oh no, do they have like a Narset now? Fairy? Narset. Alright, Narset found Teferi, uh, which is annoying. Also slightly annoying is the fact that I have exactly five cards in Graveyard, so if I want to Uro this turn, I have to lose all of the fetch lands that are in there, making my life from the loam slightly worse in the future. Um, but my Jace just got a lot worse because of that Narset. My arrow also just got a lot worse because of Teferi. Uh, Cephalid Coliseum also got a lot worse because it's Cephalid Coliseum. Kappa. My arrow also got a lot worse because of Narset. Yeah, everything's bad. Er everything is just bad. Like, I'm going to play this, and then my opponent's going to Teferi. Put this onto the battlefield. Do I pay a life to put Life of Love into my graveyard? I'm not sure that I do. It can be relevant for bringing back the Uro. Yeah, my my opponent's suite of cards is handling what I'm doing very well. 
a force of will. Sure. Yeah. All right. I think it's pretty obvious I don't have anything. I'm going to have six. Yep. And a hall breacher. All right. Are we, are we done? My Jace doesn't do anything. My Uro doesn't draw cards. My Life from the Loam doesn't work anymore. And my Raven's Crime combo doesn't work anymore either. Yeah, I, I think we're done. Concede. Why has my mana base forsaken me? <laughs> okay. Um, this is a reasonable six card hand. I'm going to keep this and um, I'm going to throw back Assassin's Trophy. It's more flexible than something like Fatal Push would be, but if my opponent is playing something like a Delver deck, just having the cheaper answer is better. I can potentially play it around a daze. All right. So this is me, huh? Let's ponder. Uh, Raven's Crimes don't look good here. Ponder looks good. I don't know that I want both Ponder and a Raven's Crime. I think I'm going to go ahead and shuffle. I have higher impact cards like Uro that I can be looking for. Okay, that's a scary land. That's an unfair land. Yep. Uh, I am 100% like pants down. No protection. My opponent can do something gross like Storm Off or Doomsday. Um, I'm, I'm not stopping them. Okay, well. I guess I'm supposed to probably play a land here first. Alright. Ravens crime you. Discarding a Tendrils of Agony. Alright, uh, we're going to make them discard again. I'm going to grab a Bayou. Ravens crime you. And I'll uh, discard the Underground Sea, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a fast league after all <laughs> we've used all my luck already and fast in flames does have a flashback cost of five and my opponent doesn't have very much mana right now but my opponent has like a win condition and a way to get it back that is safe from raven's crime so you know that's a thing um a a Life from the Loam would be a very good draw. Because with Raven's Crime, I could potentially keep my opponent from getting a critical mass of spells that actually allows them to win. I'm not sure if I can Raven's Crime them again. Like, I, I need three mana or four mana to do some of the things that are in my deck. So I'm not sure if I can just, like, afford to go into Oblivion. All right, that was a long brainstorm. Long brainstorms usually have me scared, because that usually means my opponent has it, but it took them a while to figure it out. Alright, so my opponent will go up to four mana. Um, if they have an empty, an empty is honestly probably good enough. Um, they also might just have it via Cabal Ritual, I believe. So that's seven down to two. Um, back up to five. Okay, there's seven. So now they can Infernal Tutor again for another Ritual. Or or do that, yeah. Uh, now it's just Lethal Tendrils. Or Infernal Tutor for another Tutor, and then do it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. You have demonstrated that you can kill me. Alright, um... Oops, sorry, I thought those were Bales for a second. So I want to play Null Rods. I want to play Thoughtseize. I don't really want to play Leyline of the Void, but I might be playing Leyline of the Void. I don't have things like Flusterstorms to bring in. So, like, I need to board out Fatal Pushes. Assassin's Trophy is not nearly as good as Abrupt Decay in these sorts of matchups. Uh, Plague Engineer is probably acceptable to hedge against Goblins, um, but it's not great. Yeah, I am going to need to play at least two Leylines. And if I play two, I should probably play some more. I don't know, like, Endurance covers some amount of this stuff. Like, Endurance gives me the surprise gotcha versus, like, Past and Flames baselines. Raisin Power is medium, but it gets my opponent dead. Or out a Plague Engineer. Maybe play a third Leyline, but not a fourth. I could also play another Brazen Borrower, just as something that can kill my opponent, because Uro is kind of slow. Good, but slow. Uh, I'm going to board out a Preordain and board in another card that can just kill my opponent. I think I'm going to keep things with power and toughness rather than trying to like pivot into winning via Jace. Uh, okay, this has uh, what can technically be considered a hate card and an Uro. I don't know that this is good enough. 
I am I'm not happy with this. I'm all in this. Uh this looks better. I'm gonna keep this and I'll pitch the Marktide Regent. I have the ability to protect um an important card via brainstorm. And I do have a life from the loam, although not a fetch land to pair with it. I, I think that's okay, because life from the loam can just find those things itself, and Leovold is a reasonable card. Alright, so keep pitch marktide done. Land go. Here's to hoping. Nothing scary. Uh, do I even respond to a duress? Oh no, I don't need to think about it. My opponent's just pondering. I might just end up turn brainstorm for sheer mana efficiency here. I have turn two and three kind of figured out already. Let's do it. Uh, Leyline of the Void. Yeah, I can put that back and then fetch it away. I'm good with that. And now's the question, like, do I want to brainstorm for interaction or do I just want to play this life from the loam? Probably want to brainstorm for interaction. Uh, maybe I just pass here. I don't know, there are things like Thoughtseize that I can hit with a brainstorm that would be quite nice. I'm just going to pass, though. All right, what do you have for me? How bad is it? All right, you've got your underground, see? Play out of Talisman. What do you do? Yeah, Ponder's fine. No shuffle. Oh no. Another one of those pauses. All right, I'm going to fetch in response to that. I know I don't want to draw this ley line that's on top of my library. I'm going to go ahead and, go ahead and brainstorm. So I'm going to play Leovold on my turn, and of these cards, I don't think I want my opponent to know about this. Although, I suppose doing it this way means that they, like, know about one more card, because I'm just going to play the Leovold anyway, so I'm not bluffing counter magic on my next turn. Maybe I did that wrong. Alright. Black, green, blue. There's a Leovold. Opponent knows all my cards now. We'll see how effective what I have is. All right. What's the damage? There's some hands where they just like have a pile of cantrips still, and my Leovold does a ton. And then there's other hands where it's just a pile of rituals and past and flames, and I die. Gives me a pile of artifact mana, and mid I die, or some combination thereof. All right, up to four mana. Five mana. All right, uh, this is ad nauseum. Okay, so an ad nauseum from this life total is relatively safe. Um, it's going to kill me some portion of the time. I believe they've already played their land. Okay, now my opponent has Cabal Ritual levels of mana. Um, so they can go up to five plus two LEDs, so that's 11 total mana. I imagine that I'm dead. Um, my opponent can probably just, like, play this out faster than I can puzzle through it. Um, but I, I imagine there's a double LED baseline that very easily beats me via Past in Flames, and I don't have, like, an Endurance or anything right now. Yeah, that's just another LED. Yeah, okay. Oh, hello. Yeah, I mean, trigger that. Yes, I will use that ability. Oh, my life from the loam. Oh, no. At some point, I might need to turn off auto yields, um, but I can like draw a force of will, and that will uh, counter a copy of something. Kill me! Kill me! Ooh, there's an Eve. Progenitor ooze, uh, which is some sweet tech. Uh, so this will be a past in flames. They'll get to past in flames with four mana floating. All right, I, uh, I I think this is concession time. Uh, assuming I see the past in flames, like there's there's so much in here. Like I I am very 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 dead. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna concede. GGS. Uh, we are 0-3. We haven't picked up a game win yet. Even uh, this has been rough. Uh, well again. <laughs> okay, we're gonna keep a. And that's reasonable against a fair deck and completely dead to a combo deck. Yeah, so remember when I talked about this league maybe taking three hours? I don't, uh, I don't know about that anymore.
think we're going to die real quick. The Force of Will has no uh, blue card to parrot it against. Parrot with, so I'm mulliganing it away. Uh, it looks like my opponent is mulliganing to five, which is indicative of a combo matchup where we would like the Force of Will. Say Libby. But I am, uh, I am hoping for a fair draw. Or sorry, I'm looking for a medium minus draw from a fair deck here. I think if my opponent is on a combo deck, I am unlikely to win here. All right, that's a Delver. All right, uh, so you're telling me there's a chance. So the real question here is, am I going to Assassin's Trophy this Delver, or am I going to wait to play things around days? I think I'm going to wait to play things around days. My cards are quite powerful, and my opponent has mulliganed already. I think I'm willing to take, you know, up to three damage this turn to play around days. Oh, pitching a Force of Will. That might change the equation where I just fire one of these off now. It would play into days, but play around the Force of Will, and Plague Engineer is no longer a removal spell for Delver. Yeah. All right. Show me your days or spell pierce then. Can these be basics? Forest Swamp? I think so. Uh, swamp would be really awkward for Uro. Okay, maybe these shouldn't be basics. Go like Trap Bayou. Let me fetch. All right, Bayou with the second one. And let's try to kill this. The days is pretty bad here, if they have it. Okay, they don't. And now they also don't draw that force of well. All right. You get, you get a land out of it. I am fine with that. And now I, in theory, have blue, blue, green, green. Nice. Fatal Bush is an excellent pickup. Let's Uro. Allows me to make another land drop, and the more land drops you make against Delver, the more you can play around soft permission. Good stuff. Underground Sea, yep. And I'm fine with just casting a Raven's Crime. Um, there are some worlds where this can be bad for me because it helps to, like, make a Murktide Regent bigger in the future, but, you know, cards in my deck, I gotta cast it. It's the law. All right, uh, I got a Scalding Tarn for my trouble, which, while not a dead card, is not a particularly strong card in my opponent's position. A Brazen Borrower or something for me at end step? You do. I will name a rogue with my Plague Engineer laugh turn, next turn and laugh. Although, if I draw a land, I might just uh, play an Uro instead. I'll have to see. Oh, a Lightning Bolt in my face, huh? Sure. So this is going to be indicative of Marktide Regent then. Uh, I don't have a super huge number of answers to. Uh, it is, quote-unquote, only a 4-4. Four, four. Life from the Loam. Second Life from the Loam. Do I want to play around days when my opponent has one card left? If I don't want to play around days, I can both Life from the Loam and Lake Engineer in this turn cycle. Which is really strong. Alright, I'm going to cast this Life from the Loam. Target two lands, because I can put those cards back into the graveyard over two turns for Uro-based reasons anyway. And now I could just Fatal Push Brazen Borrower, but I think getting on board with the Plague Engineer is nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the small degree of risk here. Um, I'm good on both blue and green. I guess I'll take a second Bayou rather than a third Underground Sea. Uh, I'm just going to confirm that this is a Fairy Rogue. Confirmed. All right. It's dead. Now I should be able to, like, discard some cards, ensure that my Uro resolves, and race this Merc died. Brainstorm away. Uh, this game is not over by any stretch of the imagination, um, but I am starting to get to the point of the game where I feel like I am going to pull ahead. I'm not great at answering Merc Tide Regent, but my Uro is pretty darn likely to resolve. I go to 10. Uh, do I dredge life from alone? It's just more fuel for Uro. I think that's fine. All right. Um, let's Raven Crime my opponent once. And I'll discard Misty. And now this means that they can't force a will Uro. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and play Uro. Uh, trophy, ponder, 
UC Delta Delta leave underground C or take underground C. I don't have that many patchables left. I think I'm just going to keep the underground C. All right, what was your last card? Days. It was days. Unfortunate. I will try again in another turn cycle. Okay, ponder's fine. So am I going to life from alone with zero targets? Question mark. No, because the Misty puts itself back in the graveyard. Yeah, that's fine. That's six. I I am dead to a lightning bolt. I don't have very many answers to Murktide Regent. Fatal push not killing it is such a huge deal. Okay. Yep. No shuffle. No covered island. So I have to count this out and make sure I end up with enough cards in graveyard to Uro next turn. I have to Uro next turn, 100% of the time. I can cast Maven Raven's Crime, discard, no covered island. I'll have three cards in graveyard. I'll need to produce two more cards. I can do that via Life from Alone. All right, so let's cast. Let's start here with Raven's Crime. I'll discard the land. Is your last card Lightning Bolt? Damn it. Okay. Go to three. Three cards in graveyard for Uro purposes. I can Fatal Push, um, but I don't have... I haven't had something leave the battlefield this turn, so Fatal Push doesn't actually kill Plague Engineer. That's one, two, three, four is Fatal Push. I'm dead in the air to Mark Tide. I can't get the Uro into play. That seems like death. I'm just going to double check myself, make sure I'm not wrong here. Oh, even if I Fatal Push, then I have three mana and I can't get the arrow that way. Yep, all right. I'm, I'm dead. I couldn't quite stabilize. Uh, fatal Push not killing Merc Tide uh, is decisive there. All right. I like Carpet. I like Toxic Deluges and Sudden Edicts. Jace the Mind Sculptor is okay. I am probably going to play it. Uh, I do not like the Raven's Crime here, as we just saw. That uh, That isn't actually going to win me the game. I like a lot of the rest of the stuff. I'm not sure that I'm going to force a will. I think I want to be one for wanting rather than two for wanting myself a lot of the time. If I board that out, that gets me to 60. Brazen Borrower is something that can trade with like Del Delvers and such. Um, I wouldn't mind getting another one of those in there, but I like most of the cards. Maybe I'll junk a Preordain for a Brazen Borrower. All right. How's the opener look? Medium. Um... Wasteland is exceptionally good versus this hand. That said, I'm not sure that I'm supposed to throw it back. I, I, I really just wish I had another land. Land or a Life from the Loam or a Cantrip really pulls this hand together, though. And I have an uncounterable way of dealing with the first threat that my opponent plays. Also, we lost a Mult of Five. Just, we, sorry, we lost against a Mult of Five there. Just uh, throwing it out there. Okay. You have a turn one threat. Nope. Okay, another land is perfect. That's exactly the sort of thing that I'm looking for. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and play out a Delta and hope that I don't get wastelanded. Could see something like a dashed Ragavan this turn. I don't know. See something like a Stifle. Or smells like Stifle out here. What am I, what am I doing with these lands? And am I going to get Stifled? I'm just going to play Forest here. I could I could talk for a while about like the mana of that situation um, because it's pretty interesting in regards to like am I going to fetch basics uh, you know what is going on with Uro do I want to fetch and like try to play this blue blue card I think I'm just gonna like stare at each other for a while uh, go trop I might be willing to make a move at the end of my opponent's turn and play a brazen borrower in hopes of like then trying to resolve a chase. My opponent's sitting on multiple stifles. Uh, I will probably die to my own mana. Well, is it really dying to my own mana at that point? <sighs> Here we go. Oh, it resolved. This is going to get a snow-covered island. I'm now going to attempt the second one. Okay, no stifles. I will get the snow-covered swamp. I'm going to cast the Brazen Borrower, and then probably get my Tropical Island Wastelanded. Yep. 
I will then not have access to blue blue to cast a Jace immediately, but I wouldn't cast a Jace into Daze right now anyway. Alright, we're seeing a fetch, so my opponent might be uh, busting out a lightning bolt here. That is indeed what's happening. Uh, Brainstorm is a fine card. I'm not going to cast that this turn. I'm going to play a Wasteland of my own and cast a Plague Engineer. It's kind of a weird guessing game at this point, uh, like which one of these I'm supposed to name. Ragavan? Monkey? It's like, Dash Ragavan is pretty annoying. But I kind of expect this to just be Lightning Bolt fodder again. My opponent doesn't really have threats right now. They could be sitting on something like a True Name Nemesis that they're going to hold until very late in the game. Um, but I'm a little curious, like, what made their hand keepable? They, uh, they're not so much on the threats. Alright, I can't do anything against that Narset, and my opponent had multiple, uh, basic lands to fetch out to play around my Wasteland. Rough. Plague Engineer also does not kill Narset in one attack. Alright, an expressive iteration is pretty good. Now my Brainstorm is dead, my Jace is worse, my Sylvan Library is worse. Eh. Yeah, despite how high my life total is. Um, position is not the best. I will abrupt decay this Narset if I absolutely have to, but I am trying not to do that. Alright, it goes down to one. I set a stop in my upkeep in case I need it. I am going to go ahead and cast this Sylvan Library. It doesn't do anything under Narset, but with an abrupt decay, and, like, with another creature on board that can potentially kill it. Um, this is totally reasonable. Oh, it's still, it's still good enough to get the Force of Will. Uh, I am, I am happy about that. I guess that means opponent can't protect their Narset very well. Um, which is reasonable, seeing as they haven't had creatures. Brainstorm away. Alright, there's the fetch to clear the Brainstorm. Oh, more other Brainstorm. Um... Opting to use the Volcanic Island over the regular island because of the presence of Wasteland, uh, which makes sense. Alright, new Volcanic Island. Uh, okay, that's for Uro. That's fine. Okay, sure. And that was a shuffle with that cantrip. Alright. Uh, Bayou does not cast Jace, unfortunately. Try to attack Narset. Alright, success. Cantrip's unlocked. Um, do I want to brainstorm immediately? If I brainstorm, I still can't really Jace in this turn cycle, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, specifically, I can't Jace because I don't have access to blue-blue after I use one of my blue. Um, I am I'm going to go ahead and brainstorm. I think I can hit enough things that are relevant here where this is important. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm actually quite happy with that trade. Uh, let's go Bayou Pass. I think... My opponent has more mana than they can probably do stuff with in a lot of cases. I think this Wasteland is more valuable to me currently. If my opponent doesn't make another land drop, I can start thinking about Wastelanding for, like, Hardcast Force of Will. I'm also not sure that I want to abrupt Decay Del Delver immediately either. Okay. Um, that's a problem. I suppose I can, like, Jace bounce that at some point. I think I want to Decay Delver here on the off chance that I just, like, draw a blue source to be able to play this Jace and bounce Merktide. I can probably get rid of this upkeep stop on my side right now. Uh, Leovold, you are late to the party. I'm going to die in three turns to the stuff on the other side of the battlefield. Plague Engineer with its Death Touch can attack in. Um, still not going to wasteland my opponent, I just don't think it makes a lot of sense to. Like, I have... I have four mana cards in hand, and I might want to be able to do something post-Jace. Ow. That's an Uro. So that's that's some life gain, technically. Uh, but I can't uh, escape it due to the Graft Digger's Cage. Blue-green. I suppose technically this is one of those times where I should have uh, attacked first. That sure does not produce blue mana. Sure doesn't. All right. Send them in. I get I get one more one more turn to draw a blue mana or I die to Merktide Regent with very few other outs. 
Toxic Deluge won't be an out. Uh, the Sudden Edict will be an out. Um, that is not particularly great right now as a draw. My opponent may be doing it just to, uh, like, rearrange the top cards of their library. Like, they may say, like, hey, you know, I, I want to draw a, a blast or something. Yeah, no. Card draws prevented. All right, I go to five. It stings. Okay, cool. Is my opponent's last card a, like, Pyroblast or Force of Negation? If not, I think I probably win. All right. Blue. Blue. One. It doesn't really matter from there. Two. Okay. Uh, we got lucky, honestly. Well, do we say we got lucky after missing the second blue source for that many turns? I, I don't know. All right. Uh, and there's so few outs to Marktide Regent. That card is brutal here. Play Force of Will for it. I don't know that I want to do that, though. Oh, man. Okay, so I have what is a reasonable opening hand, minus the fact that my uh, my my keepable blue source here deals me damage and is wastelandable. Uh, like, if I ponder into a green source and then have, like, life from the loan plus these cards, this hand is fine. But, like, I could ponder, miss on a land drop, get wastelanded, and die. Um... I am I am very unhappy with the mana base of this deck. I'm really trying not to beat that dead horse, but so many of my hands look like this, where there's just like clear problems with where things are at. Okay, that's not bad. It needs to be my green source from life from the loam though, which probably means I'm still pondering on turn one, which means that I'm not abrupt decaying on turn two, uh, which means Ragavan gets two hits in. Not great, um, especially when my land is going to deal me probably like five damage over the course of this game. Does this need to be trop now? Maybe this has to be trop now so that I have the option to abrupt decay next turn if I rip a land off ponder. Uh, uh, I guess it could also be underground sea, but I think it is supposed to be trop. Let's try it. Uh, can't cast this card, can't cast this card, can't cast this card. I will shuffle my library. I'll get a new ponder. And I will pray to Karanos that I do not get wastelanded. Alright, the monkey cometh. I'm gonna take two. Plague Engineer is not immediately scary, but my opponent might just play it as another threat if they have a second land drop. Okay, island. Okay, just more of their own pressure. Okay, Fatal Push is cool. I can't Abrupt Decay or Fatal Push this turn. So I guess that means I am casting Life from the Loam over Ponder. Uh, I'm going to play Wasteland. I would like to be playing Colored Sources, but I think I just need to play the things that don't hurt me, because I am about to take between 3 and 5 damage from these creatures. Alright, there's a Brainstorm, so opponent is willing to counter this. If this gets Force of Negation, I will probably lose the game. They don't have access to black for my removal spells. All right. Will my loam resolve? It does. Okay, cool. So I can probably kill a creature next turn. I still could get my Tropical Island Wasteland and things are a little awkward for me. Uh, flip to a Brainstorm. So I'm taking 5, going to 12. We'll see what the Ragavan flips out of my deck. All right. How bad? Okay. Not something I care about. Just a bayou. My opponent's really far ahead in terms of mana here. We'll see if I get to the point where I can cast my cards. Okay. Uh, I do not believe I am dredging this turn. Another land that hurts me. <laughs> you can go live over there. Am I blowing up the Delver or the Ragavan? Probably need to blow up a Delver. But then the next question is like, do I risk a counterspell and cast a fatal push on a delver or do i just take the guaranteed slam dunk abrupt decay if i fatal push and it works i can also ponder it's not super valuable but it's a thing that could matter i'm gonna, I'm gonna try the line that allows me to ponder i don't think i get to play around uh wasteland effects here 
I think this needs to be a Bayou so I can potentially cast this Endurance. And let's Fatal push the Flipped Delver. I think. Okay, it it worked. Now I can Ponder. Um, these cards are pretty good. I would like to have all th access to all three next turn. I think I want Fatal Push and Swamp next turn. Then I can play 3-drop and Fatal Push, or play, like, Fatal Push and Abrupt Decay. Uh, no, I do, I do not want to dredge. Okay, good stuff. And again, I don't think I want to wasteland my opponent. They've got a few treasures anyway. My, my lands are more valuable to me than theirs are to them. Uh, that's a Lightning Bolt. That is terrifying. I'm going to go down to 3 this turn. 5 uh, plus the Lightning Bolt. Is eight total damage. Oh shit, I wasn't thinking about the Ragavan, so I should have put the Plague Engineer on top, question mark? Eh. Or maybe I should have killed the Ragavan. Okay, sure. I feel like I'm jumping through so many hoops to just to try to get my cards to work. Like, when you play Bank Control, you just point Swords of Plowshares at something, and it dies. And you can point Prismatic Ending at just about everything, and it dies. And between my mana hiccups, some bad mulligan beats, and a few other factors like having some Raven's Crimes that aren't necessarily strong enough to just like turn a match up on their own, I, I feel like I'm I'm fighting so hard uphill. I'm I'm not going to claim that I'm playing perfectly because I I am not. I am I am making micro errors every game. Um, but this is this is brutal. And despite the fact that I'm going to have 4 mana, I'm not going to be able to do something like Leovold plus Fatal Push. I guess I could like Endurance plus Fatal Push if the Fatal Push was still around. Ugh. Am I going to die to Lightning Bolt right now? Just double Bolt? Okay, my opponent had Murktide Regent after that Ponder. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm in a situation where I could have Enduranced like, and nuked their graveyard when it started looking big. Um... Now if one has two flyers, I can only answer one of them. I'm effectively at three because of lightning bolt. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna concede. Uh yeah, we'll we'll be dropping at 04. We only put up one game game win with this. Um let's try to workshop this a bit before we close out the video. Okay. Um so where to start? Uh, let's start with the mana base. Um and let's move some stuff so I can split some things into pile. So wasteland does not cast things like Uro uh, with Escape and Leovold, uh, like these these very like mana pip intensive cards. So we have two colorless sources in our deck that don't contribute towards casting some of our most important cards. And then on top of that, we have some lands that hurt ourselves. And these are blue producing lands, and if we take a look at our one drops, uh, we have nine one drops that are blue that we want to be using on turn one a good portion of the time. The brainstorm you don't always want to play on turn one, but a good portion of the time you do. And so I think the combination of lands that hurt you plus some colorless mans, lands mean that this mana base is pushed a little bit too hard. Like it's it's a three color mana base already that is trying to play a row. And in addition to playing Uro, it's also trying to play like Abrupt Decays that want like black to be in the mix too. And there's some basics in the deck and like Basic Swamp doesn't work towards bringing the Uro back with Escape, for example. And Basic Island or Cephalid Coliseum or Wasteland doesn't work towards uh, casting Abrupt Decay on turn two or Assassin's Trophy on turn two. Um, so I think there's just a little bit more here. All right, uh, let's resort this. Okay, um, second thing. I'm not sure that the deck works in terms of speed. I think relative to other, maybe we'll say controlling decks of the format right now, like Jeskai, Ragsdale, and Bant, I just feel like this deck is slower. This Life from the Loam base strategy is slow to start with, and Raven's Crime doesn't stop powerful top, top decks like Ragavan and Murktide Regent and whatnot from just like coming off the top of the deck. And I think in addition to that, I think the Murktide Regents are a little hard to fuel here. Because like you're you're trying to escape things with Uro, which is taking cards out of the graveyard, and it's kind of like you're 
dipping pretty heavily into the graveyard once you're playing both of these. And in addition to that, you're playing this Endurance, which like maybe every once in a while you end up targeting yourself to put something important back in, and that can work against that too. Um, overall, I just don't feel like what I was doing was, was competitive. I don't feel like it was fast enough or strong enough. Um, so, Paul, I hope that is some useful feedback to you. Uh, as far as the sideboard goes... Uh, you you need you need more from Merktide Region, yeah, whether it's more sudden edicts or something. Um Merktide Region is really popular. It's in multiple tier one legacy decks right now. And I think not having enough answers to it is a is an issue here. When both Fatal Push and Abrupt Decay miss it, like maybe that's just a reason not to be in bug colors right now. Um, otherwise, a lot of the stuff that's here is fine. Again, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a Leyline of the Void deck versus some other Graveyard Hate, uh, maybe even just more copies of Endurance. This can come in against Delver as well. Uh, but those are the things that I'm thinking about at the end of this league. Anyway, I hope some of you enjoyed this. If you did, click the like button. If you want to try out this deck, maybe do a little bit of tinkering, the deck list is available in the video description. And uh, have a great rest of the day. Consider subscribing if you love Legacy Modern and Vintage.